Welcome everybody to the Joseph McGuire uh, 2.0 um, recording phone interviews over the internet. <laughs> um, uh, we'll get started. Um, I'll just say a little bit about Iowa and Ames, Iowa. This is where I'm um, hailing from today. <clears throat> uh, Last week, we were number one in the country for new COVID cases. Of the, uh, uh, today, we've gone down. Uh, today, I think it was 1,000 last week, and I saw today we had 800, so we are going down. Um, we had our, the Des Moines School District is suing the government because they're still requiring 50% um, in-person classes, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and they are cutting out on some sports since schools tend to be moving towards online learning. So that's good. Um, and, um, I don't know, most, a lot of, uh, I've been thinking a lot about the people on the West coast. I'm seeing all these pictures of blood or red skies and it's just, it's incredible. I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, and, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, because we're getting lots of rain, so I wish we could mail that to you somehow. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, and um, on that note, um, I'll pass it over to Davine. How are you doing today in Asheville? We're doing fine over here. We don't, we have great weather. We're very fortunate. Uh, we are um, just weathering the storm, teaching more and more people how to use this kind of platform for the way of the future. So I'll pass it to Joseph. Which one? McGuire. There are two of us, and we are the great Josephs. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, it's um, no no uh, fires in Cedar Woolley or in in Skagit County, and everything is I don't know. Jay Inslee's doing a fine job keeping us safe. I appreciate him, and uh, but the college isn't opening up anytime soon. So this is why I'm doing this from home. <laughs> And I think I'll pass it on to the other Joseph. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Uh, we are breathing okay. I got my N95, uh, it is Respo Techno Air Mask. It's got the filters in it. It's what I use outside when it's really smoky. Uh, otherwise, we've got our COVID masks as well. And sometimes these have the vents in them. They say you, you're not supposed to use them as COVID masks. So sometimes I just wear my COVID mask inside this one if I'm going indoors somewhere. Uh, but you really need one in order to breathe and not get all that uh, PM2 particulate matter in your lungs. And over the long weekend, Labor Day weekend, there was hints that we may have to evacuate the Hoopa Valley. They're, th they're expecting high winds to come in and off of the uh, Red Salmon Fire Complex, which is right over the hill from us, right over the mountain range from us. Um, they're thinking the ambers would be blowing into the valley and starting spot fires all over the place. And so everybody was rushing around getting all their stuff together, get ready to evacuate. And then come Monday or Tuesday, they found out that, well, the winds didn't pick up like they thought they would, and they have time to plan better for this evacuation. So we have to do one. And today's report, we do a report every at noon every day. The chairman comes on with the COVID update, and the uh, OES fire department does their fire daily report, too. So that gets put out to the community. The community is a live calling show. So I'm manning the phones, writing people's questions down, sending them into the 
So we have a stack unit that so I can type in the, the question to them and they, they filter through in them and they want to answer. Who, who, what? Or two. Okay, but that's what we're up to. We're breathing okay. The fire is, is being held back. Uh, we may not have to evacuate, not to upside. So that's, I'm, I'm hoping for that rain. So bring some of that rain over. Thank I'll do you. it again. <laughs> I'll pass it on to Eduardo, who I can fill your your uh, empty shelves up there if you like. Uh, they're only empty because um, an issue that we had with a corrupt campus person here who. Uh, Long story short, was trying to make life difficult for us, so they made us through the fire department and take some of our CDs down. But they otherwise wouldn't be empty. They uh, but we're here. We're alive. We're thriving. We're in Riverside, California. We're by a fire that got started by a gender reveal pyrotechnic gone wrong. Um, oh, I read about that. Yeah, that's that's around here. But um, so it's smoky, but otherwise. Otherwise, things are fine. We're not in any immediate danger from the fire, aside from just breathing in smoke. Uh, campus classes resume in about a month from today, um, but there will be very little to any campus activity. We're kind of switching things over to a new remote way. Since we're a university station, we work with the students and we tr bring, take them from being unexperienced to experienced broadcasters over the course of their college experience um and i'll let uh i'll pass it over to elliot fong who's also is the assistant director here at kcr who can fill in more hi elliot welcome you're muted hi stephanie hey yeah i'm just you know every eddie pretty much you know filled in everything where you know still working out stuff and uh, you know we're KUCR is uh, we're new Pacific affiliates and um, you know we just want to see what's going on and you know just participate and see just cool new things um, and um, I live what maybe 50 miles from the station um, and today we're my area is affected by another fire and it's uh, super smoky today wow of, so but um, yeah, good and um, thank you. Yeah, glad to help. Help, glad to help. Help it. <laughs> glad to have you. Hope you can learn something too. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Do you? Uh, why don't you pass it on to? Did we? Do we have anyone left? Maybe that was everybody. Richard. Richard. Uh, Richard. Yeah, Richard, who's also new. Hi, no, 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 no. Good afternoon, uh, Tadia Joe, for inviting me in. I'm Richard Davis from KUII Hopi Radio. I've been station manager and GM and plumber and tower climber since about 2009. And we first went in on air in 2000, uh, broadcasting from the oldest continuously inhabited settlement in North America. I've been a, a guest there. Um, and it's an honor now to to be a guest of the Pacifica family. We're not an affiliate, um, so I, I very much appreciate being able to eavesdrop and glean some of your knowledge. I pray you all are well, safe, and healthy as can be. Da. Where is he? Where is he located? Um, about a hundred miles northeast of Flagstaff, approximately an hour due north of Winslow, Arizona. Thank you. Don't forget one. You have a beautiful voice. Thanks. I'll pass that on to my mom and her genes. Thankfully, she doesn't. <laughs> well, I think that's everybody. Um, Ursula is, she's got her attention commanded elsewhere for the moment. So um, we'll pass it on to Joseph and he will he'll give us uh, his updated presentation on um, a a phone interviews over the internet and see what he's got for us. Are you ready to go, Joseph? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, this is the first time I've done a presentation, so I hope that works out okay. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> mean, the, are you like using a PowerPoint or something you mean? Keynote from Mac. Okay, groovy. Well, and I've never used that. Keynote for one, and I've never done this over, but I'll give it a shot, so. Okay. So, uh, 
last time I was here, I talked about, and we a lot of people talked about uh, having uh, interviews over the internet, and uh, I had just started using a program called Squadcast, and so I sort of presented a little bit about how to use Squadcast, and then uh, I decided, well, it's now I've been using it for several months now, and I think this can be applied, this is, can be applicable to all platforms of that kind. So it's not, exa- it's not over the phone, it's all strictly voice over internet protocol, or uh, VoIP or voice over the internet. Okay, gotcha. And um, and so let me see what happens when I press the uh, first the screen share button, and then the okay. Can everybody see the first slide? Looks good to me. Oh, good. So, um, you see that it's the what my title of my program is: uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, I could make a joke with Marconi, but I'm not going to. <laughs> anyway, so um, I wanted to talk about the different services. Now, we use Squadcast. And after I started using Squadcast, I found several different services. Uh, the oldest one that I can think of is Zencaster, which we talked about at the last meeting. But uh, there's Clean Feed, which was talked about at a, uh, uh, another meeting. And I have used that uh, for my radio dramas because there's no limitation to the number of people. Uh, Squadcast is a limitation of four people. Uh, Ringer has a limitation to four people. Uh, but Ringer has the ability to actually do something with a telephone. They have a, t- uh, or a telephone, a smartphone app, which Squadcast does not have. Uh, and uh, Riverside FM, which I've only looked at, but they can do up to eight people. And they say that they can do guests, that people can come in and out just like if you were at the board and uh, you could um, bring people in and they even have the ability to do a producer's job or you can set it up so that you can um, find out what questions they're going to ask and such like that. But that's what I've read. Now, um, of course, there's Zoom, which has become the Internet superstar for this year. And I'll talk a little bit more about Zoom. So then the services and what's the difference defining what we know? Uh, does... I'm going to have a, ask a question, and anytime you want to pop into the question, I don't mind. So, uh, do you guys know what a web app is? Does everybody know what a web app is? Might as well go ahead and explain if there's okay. someone new. All righty. A web the... app is yeah. a relatively new idea. It's different from a computer, and app stands for application. A web app is an app built to be run in a web browser. It's, uh, I'm not sure how it works, but it works, could be Java, uh, could be JavaScript, could be anything. And then as opposed to a computer application, which is something you download from the various stores and or websites. And the, the thing about web apps is that you're dependent on the browser for use of it. And some people have a problem with this. Most of it works with Chrome. And that's because Chrome has the Opus Codec, which is a very good um, compressor or uh, encoding uh, analog to digital. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that. And a computer app, and the only one I know of is Zoom, but I'm sure there's others is uh, a computer app that you start like we're on and everybody has to have that app on their computer uh, as opposed to just people using a browser. And so um, the difference between the two is computer apps being part of the system can use the system more efficiently. Web apps have to depend on the browsers and sometimes browsers 
it can flatten the resources, take more than is necessary because there's the browser aspect and the web app aspect. And then uh, all the ones that I, I talked about previously were web apps, only Zoom is a computer app. And so then there's the different kinds of recording ways with and storage. Uh, and the only one that does this that I know of is is clean feed and that is it's internet host browser recording with local storage so it's the browser that stores the recording and then when you're done recording it downloads it to your computer uh, there's the browser side recording and with cloud storage like Riverside FM uh, Squadcast uh, does browser side uh, recording with their own uh, cloud storage that it uploads to after you're done with the recording. It all ends when you press the stop on the recording button and it's uploaded relatively fast. And then there's uh, Sendcaster as one example has browser side recording. It's recorded in the browser uh, individual browsers and then it's uploaded to the cloud storage uh, third-party cloud storage like Dropbox and uh, Google Drive. Now, one of the things that, when I mean browser-side recording, each person's browser records on their computer, and then when you press the stop, it uploads to the various cloud storage or Dropbox or Google Drive. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay. Being uh, at, a, at a studio. Uh, guests don't have to come to the studio, so it's highly flexible. And this is the kind of the same way with a telephone hybrid. The guests don't have to come to a tele, uh, studio. But um, you can also see the guest. Uh, in most of these, they have a video, and they don't necessarily record the video like Zoom does, but even Squadcast, which doesn't record, you get to see them. Um, and times are more flexible. Now, this is a big thing for me because I'm an editor. I'm a, I do the production. Uh, file tracks for each guest. So on each browser, in and on the, um, you can set it up in clean feed, each person gets their own file track which is then uploaded and then you download so you have like if you had two guests and a and a and a um and a interviewer then you would download you would get three file tracks and in a lot of cases in many cases it's better than a hybrid telephone interview because you're not working with the 5000 hertz cutoff of what a telephone has so I'll ask any questions. I'll just wait briefly, and then if I hear nothing, then I will move on. I guess not. Okay. So now the bad. Most of the bad is at the tech and uh, end of remote recording. Because as we all know, the Internet is an unstable place, especially if you're using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, I guess, is about 70% uh, 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 stable. But then when it goes, it fails and it fails badly. And sometimes I've had where I'm hosting a site and my internet goes wonky and I disappear <laughs> from the uh, squad cast, which immediately stops recording. So I have to rejoin and say, let's go back to the last question you asked. <laughs> uh, web apps can be quirky. And resource hogs, I've had some odd quirks in Squadcast where people come in and it's not recording as one of the uh, internet tracks. Uh, it is all sounding weird. Um, but then you ask them, go out, come back in, and it's all solved. It's just one of those weird quirks with web, web, web apps. Some people don't like Google Chrome is the most common browser recommended for the web apps. That's because Google Chrome is a resource hog and, and people don't like Google 
for not un, uh, not bad reasons. <laughs> um, you have to learn if you're an editor, if you like to do this, you have to learn how to edit and learn how to multi-track editing. And I'm not a big fan of Audacity, uh, but you can do it in Audacity. It's it's harder. I use Reaper, but um, it is a uh, a learning curve. I think it's better than single track because you have much more ability to take out bad sound in, you know, sometimes there's bleed over. People have their computers on with their microphones and it's too loud. It bleeds over to another track. And but with multi-track editing, you just get rid of those. Are you and saying if you're, um, with the yes. multi-track editing that there's, because there's two voice tracks? that are separate is yes. that what you're talking yes okay yes thank you please ask questions i love questions <laughs> um uh and if you're going to do this the best computer is a new computer now i'm not going to say macintosh is the best computer in the universe oh wait a minute i do believe so <laughs> but um if you have windows or mac it's always best to have at least a couple of year old computer if not brand new for your system because everything and you should have a lot of ram and all the stuff that you should have when you're dealing with audio so any other questions okay so now we get into the ugly or you can't turn bad into good, but mediocre can be made okay. Why not Zoom? Well, when I first wrote that question, and when I first started this, I was really against Zoom, and I still am to a great a greater degree. But they've done some changes in, in the last update that made it a little better. So I won't say don't use Zoom, but no, this is what you're going to have when you're using Zoom. Uh, the CDs that were on uh, the, the wall back there are, are as we all should know, 44.1 for sampling rate. And I downloaded a file I recorded and I looked at the data and it's 32K still, which is okay. Uh, it's MP4s, compressed lossy files that are at 52K bits per second when minimally, if we're going to use MP3, we want 128. What they did do for um, people who want to record music is what they wanted it for, is they turned off automatic gain control, and you can set it up, and they get the recording without all the uh, the dynamic compression that they put on it, meaning, you know, making it sound, quote, better. And automatic gain control, I didn't even know it had it, and now that I listen, I hear it, and it's just a terrible idea <laughs> because it goes up and down. <clears throat> So your internet fails. Well, like I said uh, before, when your internet fails, things can happen, but can fail on both sides. You're having a lively conversation and that person freezes and goes away. Now, something I didn't mention, one of the things about browser side recording in um, web apps like Squadcast, Riverside FM, and Zencaster is all the internet artifacting that happens isn't captured because it's recording directly from their microphone into the computer. So if they freeze or they go ba 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 ba, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. It's not on the recording. It's only on what you hear. Okay. So that covers a lot of the in clean feed because and zoom because the host is the one capturing the sound all that internet artifacting is captured as well. Uh, so that's another reason I'm I'm not fond of using zoom and I have some problems with clean feed. So the other thing is the guest has a horrible connection. They're too far away from the Wi Fi. It's always good to plug in if you can. Um, Macs make it a little difficult because they got rid of the uh, the uh, internet connection, the RJ45 connection, but you can get a little dongle and plug it in. Uh, too far away from the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is weak, the Wi-Fi is low, Wi-Fi is not that stable. 
they have a really old computer. Uh, if they have a really old computer, then they won't be able to use Google Chrome, and that just puts an end to that. Or they don't like Google Chrome and they don't want to use it because they hate it with a passion. And the recording environment can be bad, which is, of course, true. So um, I will ask for any questions. You said that people hate Chrome with a passion. I didn't realize that. Is, is, oh, yes. I've run into that a lot. You said because it takes up resources. Is that why? Is it's that a resource you? hog. And it's run by and it's owned by Google. <laughs> oh, just because the, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So Joseph, the difference in those bit rates is partially why you get kind of sketchy audio. Uh, the bit rates for the compression compressed. Yeah. Yes. Zoom. So if you record something and you want to edit it, you want to make sure you put it in and turn it into a WAV file before you edit it. A lot of people don't know that. So they keep recompressing the file and it gets getting worse and worse and worse. So for our show hosts who are using Zoom to do um, their interviews uh, while pandemic is active, mm -hmm. when they download their audio, they can convert it to a WAV file? Yes, they, as soon as they open it up in whatever, Audacity or whatever, this, then you immediately export it as a WAV file. Then you keep the other one as a, you know, uh, a backup, the and then you file. open up the WAV file, and that's what you save to. And then once they've got it edited, and they get ready to send, because we have ours send those audio files to a Dropbox, Right, as an MP3, Once, I assume. Yeah, as and then so then they can convert it to an MP3 after they've worked with it in Wave. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, that would be fine. It's only two. It's it's just uh, I was at an NFC conference where someone was showing one of their files. It was a listening session, and we all kept hearing these little artifacts. And we asked, "Do you edit an MP3 a lot?" And she said, "Yes." <laughs> and we went, "You shouldn't do that." <laughs> We were kind. Oh, is that like a general rule then? Always Absolutely. Always edit in wave and then convert to MP3. Absolutely. All right, gotcha. Well, AIFF also any uncompressed file format, Apple lossless, Og Vorbis, I think, uh, so whatever. So AIFF is kind of Apple's version of wave. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, thank you for those questions. Uh so what are the mitigations? How can you help? Well, the person who is interviewing should have a good mic. Um, it's just a, and, and like this mic is an AT2005. And when we decided to lend microphones to DJs and uh, people who would be doing interviews, I looked at it and I found this the most uh, bulletproof microphone for $87. And it has not failed at all in Windows or Mac. I wouldn't uh, bet on. Yes. What's that mic called? It's an Audio Technica 2005 USB. Amazon started selling it again. Uh, BSW doesn't have it yet because people were buying them, and of course, droves. <laughs> and it's just a and it's a dynamic mic. That's another thing I would suggest. Condenser mics pick up. If you don't turn it way down, condenser mic picks up uh, all the room noise. Whereas dynamics are very close, and you have to be close to get a good sound. And it's sort of, I don't think you hear much of my background sound when I'm talking. Correct. What's the name of that again? Audio Technica 2005 USB mic. Okay. And the other thing is, well, if you can't, if you, you know, your guest isn't going to go out and buy an Audio Technica 2005 just because they're going to talk. Uh, there's a suggestion that I've seems to work, and that's an earbud with microphone that you plug into your phone when they have eighth inch jacks or plug into your, they seem to work very well. And they seem to cut down a lot of the noise, specifically the noise between the computer so when you have your 
external mic, internal mic on and your external speaker on, they're feeding back into each other a little bit. And so that helps with the room reverberation. So at, at best, you should have them having a, a earbud plugged into the computer's mic or computer yeah, headphone jack. So, and then, then of course, there's, you have to go through the thing, well, you know, point at this thing and, and, you know, how to use the technology in the, so that's where I say headphones are a plus. Um, and then you have to let them know how to do the web app is pointing at the headphone or mic. It's the same thing in Zoom, how to, you have to click on the little down arrow bracket or the triangle and then you go, well, click on that and you see this and it, it can be confusing. So unless they have it right away or you have a lot of setup ahead of time, you sort of live with the, the computer microphone and the computer speaker. Uh, and there are web apps that work. I mean, there are browsers that work besides Chrome and that's Chromium. They have the Opus Codec do and that's Brave and Opera, and they're both free, and you can try them, but Chrome works the best. Oh, any questions before I go to my final thoughts? Okay. How about an Audio-Technica 2020 USB? There, that, that, uh, if it's a, yes, I believe that's a dynamic. Is that a dynamic? Yes, that's yes. okay. Yes, that's good. That's actually an upgrade. Okay. This is only 44.1. That one's a 48K sampling rate. So it is actually better. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. The way it is now or how we can take this into the future. Well, hopefully someday this will end and we'll be back in the studio. But we can we can bring it into the studio to be one of our tools in the toolbox. Will it end the telephone hybrid? No, I don't think so because it's very easy to have people phone. You know, you put up with the bad sound of the 5,000 hertz roll off with the phone. Our cell phones, I mean, they have, uh, we, we bought a brand new hybrid from, um, I forget the company at the moment, um, but it says it helps overcome cell phone distortion. I don't know how true that is, but um, of course, is it the end of the studio? Of course not. The studio is the best way to do it. <laughs> getting people in the studio, getting everybody on microphones, uh, good room environment and stuff. But that doesn't mean you can't bring this into the studio. You know, you, you got a person who lives in another part of the county or another part of the country, and you can bring them in at a probably better sound than the telephone hybrid. And you can bring multiple people in. So you could bring in with Squadcast three people and one person in the studio. And when we are, go back into the studio, we're working on it. I'm going to try and make sure that we go, go to the way where even in the studio, we're going to have a track uh, for each guest. Because you just don't know how much easier it is to edit. <laughs> So that's what I say. It's just one of the tools of the toolbox that we can add to our um, what how we can do interviews. And so I'll end screen sharing and see if there's any more questions or if I haven't bored you guys. Have completely. you tried the uh, Comrex Opal? No, we have not. That's one of the things that we're going to investigate. And we have um, one, and we just haven't used it. Oh, okay. Uh, it would have been nice. To, I, I, oh. uh, I waited until before we decided to upgrade some stuff. I waited to see if anyone had any com comments or problems with it, and I haven't heard anything. So um, it uses the same Opus codec, but it has a nice function where they can download an app on a cell phone. And so they can talk on a cell phone without the telephone uh, connection or the cell phone connection. Any other questions? Did I cover it okay? Yeah, I did great. <laughs> I was Joe said to you, are you planning to? Um, sorry, my dog's yapping. It's okay. Are you 
to share your um, your presentation at the JRC. Uh -huh. Sharon would love that. Um, yes, I, 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 it depends on what time of day and stuff like that, but I wouldn't mind doing it. Awesome. Joseph, do you do um, a recording off of your cell phone? Uh, no, I, um, in, in which way, uh, do, uh, I don't use it as a, a, a recorder and I don't record off of, well, actually, let me be honest with you. I actually don't have a cell phone. This looks like a cell phone, but it's actually a little tiny iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, so I have a question. Yes. Do you think, um, do you think you, we, I think someone, uh, is there someone who, there's two people who are unmuted, are muted, unmuted. So do you think, um, if we have zoom on our broadcast computer that we could pull in a zoom conversation, uh, and play it live on the air. Um, well, you mean like right now? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. if this was our broadcast computer. Yeah. And it's actually better now than it was before. Like for instance, uh, this this new edition, it says turn off, or you can get the original sound that turns off all the ACG and all the, the compression artifacting and all that stuff. But it's going to sound like, you know, as good as their just like if you were recording it. Yeah, you sound really good right now through the mic that you're using. I was thinking that too. Oh, thank you. Um, it, it's just the latest update, and they didn't force you to have this update. So if you really update your computer or your Zoom account, you'll find that uh, they added this function. Well, don't you think all of these are going to, all these platforms are going to uh, be upgrading and getting much better since it's, you know, all of a sudden the whole world is, is using them. Um, and, and we're all paying, or at least I am paying for a <laughs> monthly subscription. So they've got some money coming in. So my guess is they're going to get better. <laughs> well, uh, Squadcast did when, when I first started, they, they did a little update that changed the screen a little bit and did some stuff. But, um, when it comes to web apps, it's all dependent on the, the, the web browser. It's all dependent on um, how the browser works at the other ends with the Squadcast and Zencaster and such. Um, and then if, if it's like Zoom, where you're depending on capturing the sound from the host, that is completely dependent on the internet and how good the internet is. Yeah, we use uh, a, an application named StreamYard, yeah. and it's for um, kind of like broadcast interviews. Yeah. And um, I think their audio is a little better than Zoom's, but uh, I'm not an audiophile. I'm not an expert on this, on these bit rates and all of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm just using my own ear. Yes. Well, that's, your ear is trained because you've been in radio, but... You know, this is talking about the less expensive versions. If you want to really go expensive, there's things like Source Connect. Okay. Uh, there are, and I think StreamYard, I think uh, there are higher ends that cost a lot of money. Yeah, our StreamYard Brings in something like ISDN kind of sound. Our, our StreamYard is 25 a month. And for people who are into voiceovers or doing voiceovers, like Source Connect is the standard. Devine, we do a morning show. We do a morning show every morning with Zoom. Mm -hmm. oh, you do on the air. Yeah, yeah, on the air. Wonderful. We connect it to the soundboard. Yeah, no, it's it's it it's quite doable. Great. I mean, the audience, you know, the audience gets used to the pandemic sound. Sometimes <laughs> it fails. So yes. it's you know, it's part of the. It, it, it's a pandemic sound. People know that. <laughs> well, I have to say that 
Um, I, I've never done a live broadcast of Skagit Talks, the program that I use this for, because at, at the beginning I didn't want to do a live show, and I just record it like they're just having a conversation. So um, I've never been a big fan of live because I like to edit. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so it looks like uh, Richard says they use Zoom too for their tribal council meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, very basic iPhone tape tutorial. Oh, huh, cool. All right. Mm hmm Well, it's, it, you know, it's, it, if, if you have a good sound engineer, you, it, it's easy. We could do anybody. It can be done. It's just hooking it up and running it through the computer feed. I wish our council would do a Zoom call. They use a, a conference call system that we just bring our equipment to and broadcast that and it isn't very good well that's where the opal so it's like eavesdropping on somebody's telephone call yes that's where yeah the opal... that would be nice maybe i can plug the opal into that hmm. the comrex that comrex replaced most everything that they used with the opal because it's using the opus codec and i think it's pretty sounds very good But I've never used it, so that's just a guess. Hmm. I'll try that. Okay. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention. So, but Devine, yes. Someone have a question? Devine, to be clear, when we when we do live Zoom calls on the air, the the, the person in we do have somebody in the studio. And the person in the studio is using the regular mics. They're not we're not running the sound of the person in the studio through the computer. Although the people on the Zoom call hear it through the air. You know, That's it goes into the computer. But was, the sound on the radio is, is through a regular mic. Yeah, that was my, uh, well, well, after I asked that question, I'm like, well, I think the host could be live at the station running uh, using their mic. And then the um, the the Zoom or the uh, internet or the web browser uh, situation could also be being sent out on the air. Right. I, yeah. I mean that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not. I, I mean. Is that what you do, Richard? The, the person in the studio uses goes right into the console directly. Exactly. The mic. Yeah, and ours would go into the yeah. console, and then but it would also be picking up the audio from the Zoom call. Right. The people on the Zoom call hear that. Yes. But you don't hear it on the radio. It. It. I guess the mic overwhelms that. Well, you have it. You have to be aware of what's what's called loopback. Yeah. It. We thought that would be a problem, but it wasn't. It, it, that's never happened. Well, you can set it up so it doesn't happen. You can put it on the uh, B side where people only hear uh, the caller or the Zoom people. And then there's another separate feed that goes. It's called a clean feed that goes to do there. So that's what engineers are for. <laughs> what if we don't have an engineer? Right. But, but strangely, strangely, we don't, we don't even do that, though. We just have a, uh, you know, we have an output or we have an input to the, the console for you know uh, when people used to use uh, cell phones or computers to to you know get sound mm -hmm. to play music, we just stick that into the computer that has the Zoom account, and we don't really do anything else. And it it doesn't for some reason it doesn't interfere. Actually, that's it, it, pretty much no basically doing what I'm saying because it's on two different faders. Yeah, that sounds okay. like an accessory okay. input. Is that an yeah. accessory input? Yes. No, that's that's pretty much setting up yeah. a clean feed. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. If I understand it correctly. <laughs> so um Yeah, and then so. if you and then if you play music, the people we we play the music off of the DJ, the, the computer in the studio. So then the people in the Zoom call, they don't hear the music. 
unless That's you why turn it's... up the, the speakers in the studio. So, yeah. you know, we usually we turn up the speakers in the studio so they can hear it because they get confused. Uh -huh. And then we turn it down again when we start talking. Ah. So they just kind of hear everything through the air. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess, uh, unless anyone else has any questions, I'm kind of done. Well, thank you, Joseph. I appreciate it very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to note, uh, your microphone shape is interesting. It looks like someone took a bite out of it. Is that a practical? Um, I want, I just, oh, it's just the way. Oh, I weird. made a foam piece. Okay. Because uh, I didn't have one, so I said, well, there's some foam, and I zip-tied it to the front. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's yeah. homemade. Got it, got it. Cool, cool. <laughs> Did anyone else have any questions? You're welcome. Well, thank you again. This was lovely. I will mute myself now. Oh, <laughs> Well, I guess that's it. Um, I was going to mention, well, uh, if, does anyone have anything else they want to talk about today while, while we're here? Uh, sometimes I go between an hour and an hour and a half, and if anyone needs to leave, that's fine too, of course. Um. Everyone's okay. All right, good. Um, I know that in the works, we have in the works um, a roundtable meeting for the Pacificaster podcast website, and um, we're just kind of um, dotting our I's and crossing T's and things like that to make sure everything's in order before we uh, bring it to the roundtable. So if anyone has any ideas for something else they want to talk about in the coming weeks while we're waiting for this other um, roundtable meeting, um, let me know. Um, otherwise, we can always just, uh, we did a, a freestyle one the other week and that, that went well too. So um, we, can, we can keep that going too, because I know different people come at different times and um, uh, just that works, works out. So um, on that note, I'll just say thank you everyone for coming. Thank you to our new people too for visiting us. It's always nice to see new faces. Um, and um, I guess that's it. Yeah, thanks. Good to see you. Have a great Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> Silent waving. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.